اللهم ارزقنا القناعة اللهم حببنا في صلاة الجماعة اللهم احشرنا يا ربنا مع النبي المصطفى صاحب الشفاعة اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته i seek refuge from shaitan and i begin in the name of allah the most gracious the most merciful i bear witness that there is no deity that deserves to be worshiped except allah and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam which is apostle and messenger you are welcome to your program a moment with the companion sponsored by the companion an association of Muslim men in business and professions. I'm your host, Abdul Ghani Abdul Majid. Our topic for today is Parenting the Shade of Islam. And our lecturer is Imam Najim. Imam Najim is the former Amir of Islamic Awareness Forum of United Kingdom, former Amir of the Companion Lagos District, a member of the Council of Imam of Lekki Muslim Ummah Central Mosque, and the Managing Director, NJ Moloni Oil and Gas Limited. Our dear listener, please join me in welcoming Imam Najim. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inu wa nasta'ufur. Wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyata amalina. Innaw man ya'di illahu fala mudilla lah. Wa man yudlil fala hadiya lah. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa allahu wahdahu la sharika lah. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. Allahumma salli ala muhammadin wa ala ali muhammad. Kama sallayta ala ibrahim wa ala ali ibrahim. Wa bariki ala muhammadin wa ala ali muhammad. Kama barakta ala ibrahim. وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك أميد مجيد. respected brothers and sisters, viewers and listeners, welcome to another episode of our program A Moment with the Companion. Today, insha Allah, our topic of discussion is parenting in the shade of Islam. Why is this important? Because Allah says in the Quran, "A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim." Bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim. Wa inta udhu naimat Allahi la tuhsuha. Meaning that if you make efforts to count or enumerate the naima, the favors of Allah upon you, la tuhsuha, you will not be able to exhaust them. You see, the favor of going to bed last night and waking up this morning, stretching our hands and the hands stretch, stretching our legs and the legs stretch. Allah says you will not be able to exhaust his favors the counting of his favors upon you. Now, of these many favors and blessings that Allah may grant us, one of the very best is the granting of a new baby to bring a person to life through our system with the permission of Allah. And Allah says about this, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ لِلَّهِ مُلِكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ يَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاءُ يَأْبُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ إِنَاثًا وَيَأْبُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ الذُّكُرُ أَوْ يُزَوِّجُهُمُ الذُّكُرَانَ وَإِنَاثًا وَيَجْعَلُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ عَقِيمًا إِنَّهُ عَلِيمٌ قَدِيرٌ Meaning, لِلَّهِ مُلِكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ يَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاءُ that to Allah belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth. Yahluku ma yasha. And he creates as he wills. 
Ya Abu Limay Yasha wa Inatha, when it pleases him, he blesses a person or a couple with a female child. And it's important that it's a female child that Allah mentions first. Wa Ya Abu Limay Yasha wa Dukur, and at other times, he blesses a person with a male child. Aw yuza wijuhum the Quranan wa inatha. And yet at other times he blesses them with a mixture of it, such that they would have a boy and they would have a girl at the same time. And we would say they have a set of twins. Or they will have a male child this time, and they would have a female child at other times. And Allah says that. When it pleases him, he does this as well. But listen to what Allah says next. Allah says when it pleases him, he makes a person to be barren. This is all within the prerogative of Allah. The knowledge of this, i.e. why he does them. Is only known to him, to him, and then he says he is the one with the ability to do this. So, when a Muslim will be blessed with a child, that child becomes an amana for him. Why? Because many there are Muslims, Christians, Jews, white, black, brown who would spend years upon years and resources upon resources looking for a child and Allah will not bless them with this child. So when you are blessed with one, Allah says it becomes an amana, i.e. it becomes a trust. That child becomes a trust, something entrusted to you and for which you are going to account to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, in Islam, what to us is parenting is actually a right which a child has over us. Because the child did not ask to be born. So, what is parenting to us becomes a right that a child has over us just as Later in life, we would have a right over our children as well. The right of a child over his parents actually starts before the child will be born. And a lot of this will start with the mother. To be born into a pure lineage is a right in Islam which a child has over the parents. The paternity of a child should never be in doubt in the ideal Islamic settings. The paternity of a child will not be in doubt at all. And to be born under pure lineage is a child, is a right which a child has over the right. And for the mother to let this child who is bound to come through me come into a world in which he would be the child of a father that he or she is, pride, is proud of is also a right which a child has over the parents who are bringing him to life. So, the right of a child begins well before that child would even be conceived, well before the woman would know who is going to be the father of the child. Why is this? Because circumstances of birth has implications in Islam. For instance, a child born outside of wedlock to a Muslim family may not, be, may, may not have right of inheritance to the inheritance that the father will leave behind upon death. This is technical and I'm careful not to make a sweeping statement regarding this. However, 
the circumstances of the birth of a child may mean that he loses out on what should ordinarily be his inheritance. Number two, a child in Islam has a right to live. And this may surprise our viewers that doesn't this go without saying, no, a child once conceived has a right to life. In other words, it is not permitted to abort a pregnancy unless there is a medical reason to do so. For instance, where it is established that to continue with the pregnancy may endanger the life of the mother, then technically such an abortion may be, may be carried out. Otherwise, to take the life of a child is to deny that child a right to life. Allah says, وَلَا تَقْتُلُ نَفْسَ اللَّهِ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ That do not take any life which has been forbidden for you to take except upon the truth which is to be determined by the scholars in the society. So a child would have a right to life. But having a right to life would also include having access to proper nourishment. Ideally, a newborn baby will be nourished for a period of two years in Islam. And this is actually an ayat of the Quran. We find this in Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 233. In the ideal world, a woman will nourish a child with breast milk, which is natural for a period of two years. If there are reasons why this cannot be done, it is understandable, but, is the, but that is the ideal in Islam. And then when the time to win a child off the breast milk will come, it is not an exclusive decision of the mother. It is a discussion that has to take place with the father of the child as well, that I think I want to win this child of the breast milk. They would discuss and then they would have an agreement. Another very important aspect of parenting in Islam is to give our child a name that he or she will grow up to be proud of. You know, many of the Muslims of our generation, if it wasn't for the MSS or MSSN, many of us, by the time we went into university and all, we were either Ade or Shola or Laide or whatever, it was MSS in most cases that brought the consciousness of the need to answer our names again. And a lot of the time, it is because people do not like their names. I was listening to Pastor Tunde Bakari once and during his preaching, and he was talking about things that he did not like about his Muslim past. He was a Muslim before he became a Christian. And he said that his name was Sindiku. That's exactly how he pronounced it. And he said, everybody will call him Sindiku, Sindiku. And he hated that name. I think anybody will hate Sindiku to be called Sindiku. Pompeo Sindiku with Siddiq or with Sadiq. The difference is huge, right? This may not be the reason he left Islam, but to give a child a name that he would be proud of, he would like, is part of the early responsibilities of parenting. And this takes me to the idea of grandparents naming their grandchildren. Islamically, there is nothing wrong with this at all. Indeed, it is honor to our parents to let them name their grandchild or their grandchildren. But what we tend to find is that a lot of the names that will be given by grandparents, the parents of the children do not like it. They do not like them. And then they do not call them by then. Most likely, it was a grandparent that would have named Pastor Tunde Bakari Sendiku. And then he grew up to hate that name. And we find very many 
amongst us ourselves, right? The best person to name a child are the parents of the child, the father of the child. Because the father will be close in generation to the child than the grandfather will be to the child. So I urge people that while it is honor for our parents, it is better more often than not that we name our own child. Otherwise, you find some of our wives, they would absolutely hate the name that their children would have been given that they would refuse to call that child by that name and they will call her Shola and they will call her some other names as well. And then the next thing is Tarbiya. This is very important. What is Tarbiya? To bring a child up such that the child will be aware of his relationship with his Allah, with his Prophet, with the books of Islam, with the hereafter, and all the injunctions of Islam. So Tarbiya is a right which the child has over his parents primarily and over the community and the society as a whole. And Tarbiya would include to give the child the so-called Western education alongside the Islamic education, such that as the Western education takes care of his affairs on the surface of the earth, the Islamic education does the same and then takes care of his, Isla of his affairs in the hereafter as well. And I want to commend many of our parents who are now have, who have developed the consciousness of sending children to go and memorize the Quran for a period of two or three years. This is beautiful. That consciousness or awareness was not there before now, but we find many of people of our disposition, middle class, upper class people, withdrawing their children from primary five, primary six, sending them away for two years to learn the book of Allah, to memorize the Quran, and then continue. This is part of Tarbiya, bringing up a child, such that the child will know his Lord. And then uh, we have to recognize that we are the mirror, we parents. We are the mirror through which our children see the world. In other words, what they see us do is what they are likely to do. So what we do not want them to do, we as parents, we do not do them. And when a child goes wayward, the parent has to lay down the law there and then in a manner, of course, which is acceptable and which, is, which does not amount to uh, abusing a child. And I'll give us an example with myself. Sometime during my secondary school days, I had a group of friends that we were growing up together in the Gutemeta, and they were free to do what they liked. They would go to cinema. We had a cinema, Central Cinema, on Lagos Street in the Gutemeta. And my friends would go to cinema now and again. And then there was this day that I got emboldened, and I just followed them. Mind you, this cinema will consume your Maghrib, will consume your Ishai, and you'll be coming home late in the evening. So I went with two of my friends who were born in the same house. In fact, we were classmates in the primary and then the secondary schools. So we finished this cinema, maybe sometime approaching 10 p.m. And then we were coming back home. About 400 meters to my house, I saw my father sitting in front of the house. And as I moved, and I knew there was trouble. As I moved closer, I saw a Ghana must go kind of bag on the floor. What was in the Ghana must go? Everything that I ever owned in my life, my dad had packed them and put them inside that Ghana must book go. Meanwhile, my friend, let me conceal their names. The first one went in. No problem. No father waiting outside to beat him. The second one went in. No problem. No father waiting outside to be him. And this was me, about 100 meters to the house. I couldn't move nearer to my dad. And my dad carried the Ghana must go. And he said, 
in Yoruba, you have given yourself freedom. And then he threw the Ghana must go and he said bye bye to me. Wow, where do I go? So everybody in the neighborhood started to beg, to plead for me. And however much they beg, my father said no. He must find somewhere to sleep tonight. He's given his freedom. Now, I would say that that was the day that, was the day that I was shaped into the person that I ultimately became long time. I knew that going to cinema was a definite no-no. And I never ever went to a second cinema in my life again because my father laid down the law in a very strong manner. Like, you know, I could have come in and he could have uh, been, uh, where did you go? When did you become? No, the manner in which he did it, it was clear to me this was a definite no-no. You can't go to cinema. No. Alhamdulillah. In fact, you know, I will say to people, I will say, it was on that day that I passed my work. It was on that day that I passed my A-level. It was on that day that I secured admission to university. It was on that day that I did a master's degree. Because my two friends who were classmates, none of them went beyond secondary school. And uh, the reaction of my father was what made a difference on that occasion. So parenting includes when a child shows the tendency to go wayward. That will react in a, a manner that spells out what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. However, brothers, before we will conclude, let me mention an ayat of the Quran. Allah says, Inama amwalukum wa awladukum fitna. Meaning that, see, your, your, your offsprings and your wealth may well become a source of trial for you in life. How will children and wealth become trials? It will be because a child would have secured the kind of freedom that I wanted to give myself on that case. But my father said to me, you are not going to become a trial for me. No, he laid down the Lord. The only way by which our children will not become trial for us is for us to carry out our parental duty with ourselves being examples. We wake up for fajri, those who are old enough to go to fajri, we bring them up. Allah says elsewhere in the Quran, He says, Ya ayyualladina amanu ku anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. Now, Allah could have said, Ya ayyualladina kafaru, ya ayyualladina limunafikun. Allah says, Ya ayyualladina amanu. Those of you who have believed, ku anfusakum, save yourself wa ahlikum and your family nor from fire which fire he says the fire that the fueling of which is mankind and it is stone as well right so allah having already believed saying to us that it is not enough to save ourselves we have to strive to save our family from this nor as well and the only way to do that is to let there be a balance between the spiritual and the mundane in the lives of our children. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the wherewithal, the ability, the tawfiq, to be able to be model children upon which, from which our children will see examples and to be parents that will be able to look our children in the eyes and say to them, when did you see me do this? Did you ever see me do this? Did you see your mother do this? This is parenting in Islam. It is an amana, and we are going to be asked about it. Akulu kouli hada, wastakfirullahi wa You are still watching A Moment with the Companion. You've just listened to an analytical and practical lecture today. Please, if you have enjoyed this, please join us tomorrow. Same station, same time. I remain yours in the service of Islam, Abdul Ghani Abdul Majid Masalam. You welcome to the first Kaitarian College. Here, you are assured of qualitative, quantitative, 
Islamic and general education. There is a provision for day and budding with facilities like home away from home. The Quranic memorization program is world class and competes favorably with any other. The recreational activities and psychomotor skills are well entrenched in our educational curriculum for the healthy development of your child. The First Catherine College affords you continuous reward when you bring your child to this great citadel of learning for a well-rounded and balanced education laced with morals. Guess what? You start a chance to get rebate and bonuses if you are among the first 20 to enroll your child into our GSS1. The first criterion college is located at 6 to 8 Osenia Lagbaje Street off Igbe Road, Ikurudu, Lagos. For more information, visit our website at www.thefirstcriterioncollege.com or call 080-9056-7305.